Hello fellow history fans and welcome back to this week's video and today we're looking at a brief history of the Great Locomotive Chase. Some could say I like bizarre historical events and mixing bizarre history with a mode of transport is even better. So thank you for the suggestion on this subject, I found it really fun researching it. Plus it's been a while since we've done anything on the American Civil War. How would you think about bringing the fight to the enemy, bearing in mind the limitations of the 1860s? Two options that I would think would come to mind would be by horse or by foot. Well, if you know the uh, title of this video, rather obviously there's a third option. Steal a railway locomotive and go on a destruction derby for the best part of 83 miles. The Great Chase was the brainchild of part-time spy James J. Andrews. Now I'm not sure how you could be a part-time spy, but I'm probably just missing something. Union Major General Ormsby M. Mitchell, commanding the federal troops in Middle Tennessee, had a predicament. He wanted to take the city of Chattanooga, which is rather reasonable aspiration being in a war and all. However, this particular city was almost impervious to the standard fare of besieging a city by starving the occupants and then bombarding and invading. Due to the fact that it was naturally defended by water and mountains. Unfortunately, Mitchell was lacking the appropriate size of army to attack the city. So he sought to cut off Chattanooga from nearby Atlanta by severing the valuable railway between the two cities. Enter stage right with Andrews and his cunning plan of nicking a train and going on a rampage. The idea was to damage the rail link to such a degree that it would be unusable for the Confederates, making way for a Union advance on Chattanooga. With a stamp of approval for Mitchell, Andrews gathered volunteers for his raiding party. He ended up with 22 Union soldiers and two civilians including Andrews. The raiding party would later be called the Andrews Raiders. The raid was to be sprung on the 10th of April 1862, starting off in Marietta, Georgia. But poor weather conditions pushed the operation back by one day. Finally the raiders met up on the morning of the 12th and the plan was put into action. The locomotive, the General, made its scheduled stop for water and breakfast for its passengers in the Lacey Hotel, Big Shanty, Georgia. Now this particular stop was selected due to there being no telegraph office, meaning that once the train was nicked, the raiders would have some sort of a head start. Now, for some context, steam trains aren't the best for long distance travel, as they use up a lot of two things, coal and water. This forced trains in this time period to make stops along their way. Because of this, food was usually served at the resting points as well, due to in-car dining not being commonplace. The railway between Big Shanty and Chattanooga had some steep inclines, and because of this the train had to take on a lot of water and fuel. This also meant that the average speed of the locomotives in the area was around 15 miles per hour. The Andrews Raiders commandeered the train in front of its confused passengers, who were at this point pretty dug into their breakfast. Before anyone could react, the General had made its way on its rampage behind Confederate lines. The train's conductor, William Allen Fuller, gave chase with a number of other men, initially on foot but eventually commandeering a handcart. The great locomotive chase had begun. Fuller found his first locomotive, the Yanoa, to pursue the raiders, all the way up to Kingston, from there he took over the William R. Smith. However, he only got as far as two miles south of Ardsville, where he was stopped in his tracks, sorry about the pun, by sabotage to the rails. Fuller and his men were forced to carry on the pursuit on foot, until he was able to commandeer his third locomotive, the Texas, beyond the damaged track but due to the lack of time, he was forced to run it backwards whilst picking up 11 Confederate troops at Calhoun. The chase was slow due to the terrain, the horrendously slow line speed, and the relative inefficiency of the raiders due to their lack of tools to properly destroy the line behind them. To slow things further down for Andrews, the general had to carry on running to schedule due to much of the line being single track forcing him to wait in passing loops for oncoming trains to clear the section ahead. Because of this, Fuller was able to stay on the raiders' tails for most of the chase. Even though the railway wasn't heavily damaged, the raiders managed to interrupt local infrastructure by cutting telegraph lines, allowing the train to continue, albeit slowly, north towards Chattanooga, 
unmolested by the isolated station masters they encountered. At Dalton, Fuller managed to telegraph General Ledbetter in Chattanooga. My train was captured this AM at Big Shanty, evidently by federal soldiers in disguise. They are making rapidly for Chattanooga, possibly with the idea of burning the railroad bridges behind them in the rear. If I do not recapture them in the meantime, see that they do not pass Chattanooga. The telegraph wires were cut before the full message could be sent, however enough got through and General Danville led better sent troops south along the western Atlantic right of way to halt the engine by force if necessary. However the end was near for the raiders with fuel and water running out, and to put a final nail in the coffin, the general blew a small valve causing the engine to lose power and finally stopped two miles north of the Ringgold Gap. The raiders split from the generals scattering across the countryside in an attempt to rejoin Union lines, however all were captured and held prisoner awaiting their fate in front of a confederate court. Andrews was charged and found guilty of being an unlawful combatant and spy. He was hanged in Atlanta on the 7th of June 1862. A further seven shared the same fate on the 18th of June. The remaining raiders survived the noose with eight escaping and six later being exchanged for Confederate prisoners of war on the 17th of March 1863. The first medals of honour were awarded to the participants of the Great Chase, however due to Andrews and William Hunter Campbell being civilians, they weren't given an award posthumously, which is kind of sad to think as they both played an integral part to the raid. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the subject. If you have any bizarre events in history you'd like me to talk about, let me know in the comments below. As always, my sources are in the description along with the usual social media links. A special thanks goes to my Patreons and as always, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.